Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked with Hagar, Dr. McLuhan reveals that God sees you and cares for you in times of trouble. God promised Abraham and Sarai their descendants would be no more numerous than the stars. With each passing year, God's promise to them seemed more and more distant and impossible. As Sarai grew older, the feeling of shame so overcame her, it was unbearable. She devised a plan to help God. She said to her husband, behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go to my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai, Genesis chapter 16, verse 2. Sarai's servant was an Egyptian slave. In those days, a girl like that would not have been able to say no, and the young girl easily and quickly conceived. It seemed like a workable solution at the time quickly turned into a nightmare. Shortcuts to God's plan for our lives just do that. They turn into a nightmare. Sarai came to resent her choice, her husband, and her servant. To try to console her, Abram said to her, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. And Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 6. The servant girl felt so abused that she attempted to return to Egypt. She began walking down the way of Shur, the road between Syria and Egypt. It did not take long for her to realize that she could not make a journey like that all alone. Perhaps you're in a bad situation, and in your confusion, you have put yourself in an even more dangerous situation than you were already in in the first place. God specializes in finding people just like that. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur, Genesis chapter 16 and verse 8. Note with me the phrase, the angel of the Lord. This is a remarkable statement. It is the first time that this phrase has been used in the Bible. Now, in my message, God talked with Abraham, I introduced this phrase to us. When you see the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, capitalized, it represents the four letters Y-H-W-Y. It's usually pronounced Yahweh or Adonai, the Lord God. We learned that capital L-O-R-D is known as the Tetragrammaton, the unsayable name of God. This is the most important name for God. It is found over 6,000 times throughout the pages of the Bible. Dr. Shabar Ali confirmed that the, this holy name for God is not found anywhere in the Quran or the writings of Islam. What is most fascinating to me is that before this Yahweh spoke to Abraham, he spoke to Hagar. He spoke to a vulnerable young girl, the young girl in this story. He did not speak to her in Arabic. He spoke to her in Hebrew. Listen to this tender conversation that took place with this young lady. Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. First of all, God called her by her name. Neither Sarai nor Abraham called her by her name. That servant, my servant, the slave. 
If her name had not been recorded in the Bible, Muslims would never have known Hagar's name. Dr. Shabar Ali also confirmed that although Hagar is important to Islam, her name is not found anywhere in the Quran. Hagar is mentioned over 60 times in the Bible. Now, you may feel that you are nameless among the people with whom you live, but you are not nameless. You are a face to God. After calling her by name, the Lord asked her a really important question. Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? Genesis chapter 16, verse 8. Now remember this, when God asks you a question, he's not looking for information. He already knows. God's question help us to think more clearly about the situation that we find ourselves in. Now can you answer the question that God asked of Hagar? Do you know where you have come from? And more importantly, do you know your roots, your spiritual roots, your identity? More importantly, do you know where you are going? This is the most important question that any of us can answer. Listen to Hagar's response. I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 8. So Hagar was running like a lost orphan with no meaningful human relationships and no relationship with the living God. Running, we discover, will never solve our problems. Listen to God's response. Return to your mistress and submit to her. Genesis chapter 16, verse 9. Now, you might not like God's response, but it was the best advice that Hagar could have received. If she had kept running down that road, she certainly would have died if not had been killed. But before God sent her back, he gave her hope to hold on to. Listen to how Hagar replied to God. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God of seeing for she said, truly, I have seen him who looks after me. What a stunning response to go home and submit. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13. Hagar encountered El Roy, the God who sees. Have you seen the one who wants to look after you? Listen to what else God said to her. I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. Behold, you are pregnant and you shall bear a son and you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. What a lovely name. Genesis chapter 16 verses 10 and 11. God loves the descendants of Abraham through Hagar. Arab people have a special place in the heart of God. God promised Hagar that her son would not be a slave. He would run free and his descendants would become a great people. God said, he shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hands against him and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 12. God gave Hagar a great promise to hold on to. She re renamed the well where God spoke to her, Beer Lahai Roy, after discovering that it is the God who sees and who looks after those who follow him. Therefore, the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. It is between Kadesh and Bered. Genesis chapter 16. And verse 14, God remains true to his word. He has taken care of the Arab people. He made sure that Arabs were in Jerusalem on the day when the Holy Spirit fell. 
In Acts chapter 2 and verse 11, we read that Arabs were among the people who were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Now, if you've ever been caught in a set of circumstances like Hagar was, you can be sure that God will see the trouble you are in and he will take care of you. The Bible says that it was the angel of the Lord who spoke to Hagar. So who is the angel of the Lord? It is an Old Testament appearance of Jesus. The one who appeared to Hagar is the one who appeared to the Samaritan woman at the well in the New Testament. Recently, I listened to a Somali lady whom God found in the desert tending sheep and the encounter she had with him. There are some interesting connections between Hagar's story, the Samaritan woman, and this lady from Somalia. Mariama was born to upper-class Muslim family living in Somalia. She suffered the loss of her mother when she was very young, just five years old. She spent part of the year with her dad in the city attending madras and regular school. She spent the summers with her grandmother in the countryside. She loved being with her grandmother because her dad had lots of farm animals and she enjoyed taking care of these animals, especially the young goats and the lambs. When she was with the animals, she felt a comforting and yet invisible presence following her in the farm. Sometimes she saw a shadow, sometimes she heard a voice. She knew someone was with her, but she could not see him. At night, she would look up at the brilliant stars and have questions about the one who made this glorious night display. She would ask herself, who is the God? Who is the God in the shadows? When she returned to the city to be with her father and to attend school, she did not feel the presence or the shadow following her that followed her in the country. And even in the mosque, she did not feel the presence of God. One day, Mariama got up the courage to speak to her grandmother. She said, Uma, when we pray and when we fast, Allah never talks to us. How do I know if I will go to paradise? And who, her Uma said, we don't know. All we can do is live the best life that we can, but we will never know if we will go to paradise. That was the day that Mariama decided she was going to leave Islam. She didn't know who the shadow was, but she knew it wasn't what she had been taught. She went on to complete her nurse's training. Occasionally, when she would take walks, she would feel the presence of God or that shadow with her. But as her life became more and more busy, the shadow seemed to go away. Mariama got married and came to America where she faced a lot of shock, culture shock. People in this room are facing a lot of culture shock who come here. Uh, she did what she needed to do to survive, but she felt that something was missing in her life. Her heart ached to know the God of the shadows that she had felt in the desert. Over the next 14 years, while she lived in America, no one ever told her about Jesus. No one ever shared with her what it would be like to know Jesus. Her heart ached to know the God of shadows that she felt in the desert. She saw crosses everywhere, but no one shared with her why they were there or what they meant. In 1991, Somalia fell into a deep civil war. And during that horrible dark time, young men were either forced to fight or they were killed. Miriam lost her dad, all of the male relatives, and many, many friends. 
the women and the children of Somalia fled to the wilderness for safety. Miriamah was so devastated by the news. Uh, she was able to bring 22 family members to America who had fled to Ethiopia for their safety. She was so broken by this, one day driving home from work, she reached a point where she couldn't drive any longer. She pulled into a parking lot, began to cry out, Allah, why has this happened to me? Why are all these things going on in my country? When she finished crying, she looked up, and she saw a beautiful cross on a building. She did not know what it meant, but she knew it had to have something to do with her story and something to do with what had happened as why there was so much conflict and suffering in Somalia. She pulled herself together. She knocked on the door of the building and asked the person who opened the door, can you tell me about the cross? The secretary asked her to wait a moment while she called for someone to come. A few minutes later, a man came out to talk with her. Mariama had no idea that the building was a church or that the man who was speaking to her was the pastor of the church. So a few moments later, the man came out and began speaking to her. And he invited her to church. He arranged for a family to go visit in her home, to share the message with her. She began attending regularly both the church service and the Bible study. She learned that the God who sees and the God who cares was following her in the desert. She learned that Jesus was the good shepherd. Not long after that, in a church service, the people invited her to receive Jesus as her savior. So after listening to the pastor speak, Miriamah went forward and said to the pastor, if I accept Jesus today, will I go to paradise? The pastor was able to assure her that she would with these words from Jesus. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. John chapter 5 and verse 24. Mariama said, if Jesus can promise me eternal life, then I want to ask him to forgive me for my sins, and I want to accept him as my Savior today. Mariama discovered that Jesus offered her more than a place in paradise. He offered her a daily relationship with him she never anticipated that she could have. She discovered that she could talk to Jesus anytime. And just like she cared for the young goats and lambs in the desert, Jesus was willing to take care of her. Perhaps like Mariama, you would like to know that you will go directly to heaven when you die. Today an invitation is being extended to you to receive Jesus as your Savior. Say with me, thank you Jesus for revealing yourself to me today. Thank you for seeing the trouble that I am in and being willing to take care of me. I accept you as my Savior today. Forgive the sins I have committed and fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you just prayed with me to receive Jesus as your Savior, write to me and I'll tell you more about your decision to follow Jesus. Father God, you are El Roy. You are the one who sees us even better than we see ourselves. You have looked over us and cared for us in times of trouble. You understand our circumstances and you understand why we're running. We look back at you. We look up to you, Elroy. 
with our thanksgiving, our trust, and our love. Through the name of Jesus, we pray, our Savior, Yeshua. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.